And here we have it, everyone. Sinners versus Night Owls, the rematch of the century. And before I can even finish my sentence, White's going to be getting a hit in on Arushi. Kafulio on the killer now. Pallet is going to be dropped here very early on. And why? Don't you just love being in a chase against Blight Prion? Uh, definitely not. I'm Blight's number one <laughs> hater in scrims as Kafulio oh gets his first down onto Urushi so fast into the game. And, I mean, he's going to be... He's going to be wary of a pallet save because that's kind of what happens when you get it down that fast. Really nice uh, double rush there onto the armor pile. He does get pallet stunned, going to break that pallet. And this should be a hit onto rats. Yeah, that's a second free tag after getting the down onto Urushi. And we saw just Gordon's activate in the distance, so we know that rats is the only survivor that could be pallet saving here. But Urushi gets up. He had unbreakable. That's going to be a really important perk down for the survivors already. But it does get them out of that first hook. And Urushi's now going to go back towards Shack where the pallet is already broken. This chase is going a little bit longer than it probably should have now that he went to go get the free tag on rats. But Urushi runs back into Kafulio on the other side of the Shack. He's going to go down though. Really calculated though. I think he did that specifically so they could get that double gen done. Yeah, just buying time here is exactly what you want to do. And it was really good damage control there from Arushi, to be honest. Obviously, going down before we could actually formulate our thoughts, our opinions on the match at all. So, phenomenal play from Kafulio. But yeah, Arushi making the best of a bad situation. Unbreakable is going to be down for the rest of the match, though. Obviously, you get to delay the first gen a little bit, but that's probably not the most ideal use. Generally, when you're early in the game, you can try and avoid going down a bit more. You have more things on the map to work with, more pallets, more resources, but against a Blight of this caliber, don't mean Jack. Obviously, we have both the Blighted, the Crow, the Rat add-ons, just to get that speed up and pull off some of those absolutely ridiculous techs that you yourself are such a big fan of playing against. As we see here, going onto the high ground, Rat's actually just going to be jumping off, and yeah, Kafulio not really going to be able to follow, but this is the thing with Blight. You can essentially proxy camp from like halfway across the map, because what happens if someone comes through for the save? You're just back on it in about three seconds, right? Spice from Shadow is also being triggered here, so actually getting some decent value out of the perk to find onto Winter Edit, and yeah, taking no chances there, going to be rushing that one down, making sure Pallet cannot be made. Is this a trade that's going to be coming through from the Spiders? Does look like it, so Claudette is going to be going down for the cause of Rushi, however, Y y your haste doesn't really mean a whole lot against the killer that can just kind of go double speed. Obviously, going to be baiting the hit out with the vault here, but yeah. Right now, you can kind of see where Kafulio's priorities lie. Yeah, and notably, we, we, we could have guessed this oh. because we saw the Unbreakable first, but Urushi goes down again, and he is the Deliverance Had deliverance! Player. Oh, yeah, it's so a curse, isn't it? <laughs> this could have been complete disaster for Night Owls right off the bat if... Um, Urushi hadn't gotten something for that down, so they actually get another gen in the distance. Urushi, death hook now, deliverance is totally out of play, uh, and Kafulio is sitting in a pretty good spot here. They do have good progress here on this hill gen, um, and they're gonna fast pull him, and assuming that no, there's no for the people coming in, and he's just gonna get into his third chase here. Kafulio rushing past him, waiting out the borrowed time. And this is going to be Urushi's final chase here. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if that unhook was a good idea, especially without a for the people. I was really expecting one. I mean, yeah, obviously you kind of understand that the tongue's going to be coming through. Why not let Urushi hang just a little bit longer for that? Credit credit where it's due. Urushi right now doing a pretty good job, just kind of buying more time against Kafuli. I'm going to be using as many resources as possible. You know that you are. You are the hunted right now, so you might as well just do what you can to defend yourself. Right now, yeah, Kafulio doesn't really care about this Discord all that much, wants Urushi out of the game. And we know this to just be standard gameplay here. And yeah, it looks like just doubling up on the gens, it seems like these survivors almost know that they aren't going to be all escaping or even completing all of the generators. You know, yeah, they're going to be double living up on that gen, but yeah, go Significant progress on Rats' solo gen too. Survivors are actually getting quite a bit of good progress for the death of Urushi. And notably, Urushi went to the perfect place to die. And that is exactly what you have to do against play. Uh, he's going to interrupt this gen here over by the main building. He does have somewhat of a three gen here with the two gens next to the main building and this one that he's kicking right now. And now that we're in the 3v1, Spies from the Shadows is going to really come in big, especially if they're not able to reset rats quickly. He's going to find another chase here on a counter raid at the Shack. Uh, counter raid, going to take a hit at Shack, and 
run as far away as he can, but that's not going to be very far against Plight. And oh, we see the uh, double fatigue bug there. Counter raid going edge map. He does have lucky break, and it looks like Cafulio lost him completely. Yeah, also, I'm not sure if it's been used already, but has a full heal in that med kit, purple med kit with the abdominal dressings is going to be allowing full heal to be coming on in. So, Counter Raid is going to be able to get healthy without the assistance of the rest of the team, but right now, no one is here to assist you. Claudette is going to be chased down, but Cthulhu are actually not going to be committing to this. He's just kind of sticking around here. Yeah, had an inkling that someone was around, and that crow being incredibly loud, giving him away. Heal did come through there, and Cthulhu... This is some uh, some juicy blight play, and yeah, gonna be getting that hit through in the end. It was sloppy, but you know what? It worked out regardless, and it's only a matter of time for these rushes come back online. No loop is safe against this killer, but the lucky break seems to be getting value again. Cafulio just kind of ditching counter raid there. Yeah, and I think he's ditching counter raid because he knows that counter raid is so far away from any of the gens that he wants to protect, and that's why he comes over here, finds finds blood, finds scratch marks from rats. He's going to not bump there on the logs, and that's going to lose him a lot of distance. Rats is going to be able to get away from the gens. I mean, he may go down here. He doesn't have a pallet at this tile, but Rats going to the perfect spot to die once again. He's going to go down to the flick at that rock, and he is going to be picked up. So what are these survivors doing? Yeah, looks like they're splitting the gens. Yeah, so this is actually fairly different from what I was saying before. Counter is fully healed up, likely just posturing for the save right about now. Yeah, looks like that. Uh, yeah, that's that's good. that's gonna be the man assigned to do it. Counter raid right now. Instead, Fulio just going back to all these generators, realizing the progress on them. But yeah, Pop is so unbelievably strong, even in the hands of a weak kill. You put it on Blight. Holy hell, you've got a machine on your hands. And yeah, once again, Spies from the Shadows. Not obviously Blight's relatively restricted and what he's able to bring under our balancing. But yeah, Spies from the Shadows working out quite well. And, Ooh, that's and how did that not hit? Fortunate. I, uh, I don't know, the voices. Cthulhu just kind of swung a warning shot there at Winter Edit, realized it didn't want the game to end that early. Obviously, gonna be coming back to kick this gen. Sees the discordance over here, and yeah, credit where it's due, the survivors are very split. They're, 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 they're kind of just employing some Fabian tactics right now, kind of baiting some aggression, but never really committing to a full chase. And that's kind of, that kind of works out. Yeah, and we saw that Orushi had overcome when he died, so we know that the exhaustion perks on these survivors are going to be Sprint Burst, Lithe, and Balance Landing, and I think we're going to be seeing them position accordingly on these gens as the Blight rushes towards them. Uh, as, yeah. ooh, Winter Edit's going to go down at the Ormond tile near the gen, and that's going to be another hook, or that's going to be a hook onto him, and we see another Spies bird go up in the middle of the map, maybe Rats angling for another flashlight save, but no, the blight is actually going to go back burst. to the other gen. Yeah, Rats has a 99 sprint burst there as well, so was definitely seeing if some kind of hero play could come out, but no, likely going to be looking for the pickup onto Winter Edit, and then the ability to get the hell out of dodge after that is going to be very valuable. And yeah, again, these survivors are just so damn elusive. Yeah, you have one down right here. Yes, you have one injured on paper. It looks pretty good, but you're actually really struggling to lock anything down. Meanwhile, there are about, what, two, three gens, which seem just about ready to pop, and yeah, but that's going to be one in the corner, that's going to be the one on the hill, seeming like it. This one, obviously, Pop Goes the Weasel is going to be pulling that one down, but yeah, the new changes are going to be coming in. That generator can't be regressed no more, so provided the survivors can actually get a little bit of progress and stop that generator from regressing, then it's going to be a good time. Rats, store something cool in the basement. Rats, and I mean, Cofilio is actually going to leave because he knows that Rats is just going into the basement to buy time for something else. Really smart play there from Rats, and uh, he's actually going to continue living here, just trying to bait Cofilio down mean, into the basement so that Adam. I mean, can Rats get is useless. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. mean, until he gets his sprint burst up, there's nothing Rats can do, and uh, Counter Raid is just going to leave. So there's a really good chance here that Winter Edit is going to go second. Cofilio rushing away again. He's going to find Rats out of the basement. Barely Ooh. misses that flick. I don't think I, I think he might have wanted to go for another bounce there and rat is rat is going to escape. Claudette is going second here, and yeah, it looks like they're gonna let Claudette go second. Oh, he misses the collision there, allowing Winter Win or Counter Raid to get further around the tile. And he's gonna miss the flick onto rats again. But rats not going for that unhook. He knows he can't trade that here at the in the 3v1. Now this 
Honestly, this can still go either way. This could have been played very well, but yeah, time's being bought here. And yes, the save is just able to come through. Cthulhu not going to be committing into this duo, so maybe a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room here for Winter Edit to actually get healed up. But in the meantime, Stunk is going to be coming through. Spies from the Shadows, again, just giving you good, consistent information. That's exactly what you want. What was initially a relatively safe heal is now not in the slightest, because you know exactly where these survivors are. You don't even really care about counter raid. Like, sure, you can get some kind of nice hits on him. It actually is going to be committed to the chase because Wind Reddit has gone missing. Off to save, off to save their friend, obviously. And oh, that's what a, a body block! That's a brilliant rats. body block, but yeah, unfortunately, not going to be a lot. Very clever play here. Rats has the flashlight. Julio knows it. The save not going to be coming through. Counter Rage going to be trying to. Bully this gen through, and uh, it's not quite going to be working out, unfortunately. This is just the power of Blight. Survivors have played this immensely well, but yeah, the game seems a lot more in Coolio's hands now. Yeah, ever since uh, Urushi died, the progress just crawls, and with only two survivors now, it's not looking like Night Owls is going to be able to get another gen, but let's not delude ourselves here. Getting down to one gen against Blight on this map is definitely a good result for Night Owls that I think they can be very happy with. Yeah, especially considering how rough that early game looked with Arushi going down within, I want to say, like, 20, 30 seconds of very fast early down. Obviously, the Unbreakable help there. And then also, a little bit of luck came out. Obviously, we joke about it a lot, but having Deliverance does increase your likelihood of being tunneled out first by about 500%. Scientifically proven fact, look it up. So that doesn't help in Arushi's favor here. So yeah, looking like the 4K at one gen is going to be coming through, obviously. There may be a play for Hatch as well, just try and deny a couple of extra hook stages here. Counter Raid, I do not see Counter Raid being long this well, but even if Counter Raid goes down and Rats able to escape, remember, we measure the, the, the primary method of the primary method of measurement after generators is hook stages, not necessarily kills. So camping out Counter Raid here and getting them to three stages it's 11 versus 12, which is honestly a pretty good margin. So you definitely take the hook onto Carrot Raid here over Rats. It's a small thing, but it's something that you really need to consider in these high-level games. And we're getting further, further into the tournament. The competition only gets harsher, but uh, Rats, you weren't, <laughs> you weren't very hidden there, bud. It's really important to note that Counter Raid is on first hook. He can't Kobe, which means that uh, Julio is going to have so much time to find Rats. That's going to be the hook onto Rats. And, yeah, one of the really important things in this game, I think, was Spies from the Shadows, and the fact that it is one of those perks that is nearly impossible for the survivors to tell when it's in use. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I, I, and even if you do know what, you know, when it's in use, what are you really going to do about it? Let's, let's, be, let's be completely honest here. I mean, obviously, yes, you kind of, can kind of stop the crows from jumping off if you're crouching or walking the entire map but why would you be walking and crouching around the entire map just its sheer existence is actually a really big thing and it's relatively hit or miss as a perk on how good the information it will give is but the information here honestly absolutely brilliant for Cthulhu so wonderful performance there coming out through our blight going to be seeing uh Going to be seeing whether or not this can be matched next time that Night Owls have their killer round. So we're going to be back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere because we'll be back with Night Owls on the Blight. We are back, everyone, on Suffocation Pit 2. Now with Night Owl's side of the Blight, we see Urushi on the Blight looking for his first survivor. And he's going to call out... Bluff Bucky behind the edge map tile. What a find there. And that's going to be his first chase starting lightning fast here at the Ormond tile. This tile is not safe. He's going to choose to go for the rush. Bounces once, bounces again, goes off the edge map rock. Barely misses that rush there. And he's just going to have to break the pallet there. Nice pallet play from Bucky. Uh, and this first chase is going to be so important, Egder. Already lasting far longer than the, uh, already lasting longer from the chase on the, uh, Sinner's side, so already you can consider that almost a little bit of a failure there. Yeah, pretty unsafe tile there, as you're saying, Ormond tile, not exactly the greatest power in the game, but gonna be worked well with Bucky anyway. At the end of the day, you are against the Blight, and now Bucky is gonna be referred to in the past tense, being put on a hook now. Something that I kind of want to question is this first generator already completed. Discordance versus Dying Light. What's the idea of the Dying Light here? Obviously, it's a little bit more passive slowdown, but do you, 
Do you think that that's more beneficial than the consistent information of the discordance? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. As we see Urushi getting rid of this pallet near main, he's gonna look back towards the now as he breaks the wall. But I think some of these blight perks just come down to pure personal preference, as so many of the strongest perks are just flat out banned that um, you kind of get diminishing returns here if you try to like theory craft the 1% advantage between the perks. I think it just comes down to some people like that like 4 to 6% slowdown and some people really like to know which gems are being doubled. Yeah, and oftentimes it can, yeah, and, 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 and oftentimes that 4% can be enough. Bucky is able to make it to this pallet, so the tunnel isn't going to be as easy as initially assumed here, but this is a blight, and ooh, nice, actually, yeah, nice bait there. Bucky actually going to be backing away from that pallet at the last moment, forcing the pallet break instead of the hit coming through if Bucky were to vault that. So obviously, these players have experience. They have to wear with you about playing against these top-level blights, and Bucky, a little bit of BM there, just going to be dropping the pallet on his head, saying, you know what, I do not respect your blight play right now. I do not respect your play. And yeah, once again, just showing Arushi who's boss right now, taking a little too long. Arushi has to back the hell out because he knows the win condition, knows that, you know, these survivors cannot be allowed to complete all of these generators. And if you're on Bucky just a little bit too long, that's going to be a hell of a problem. Yeah, and holy cow, Sinners are doing really Ooh. well right now. Such good chases from Bucky so far. Uh, only one hook to Arushi's name, and I mean, they've got him dry kicking gens. This is trouble for Night Owls. Yeah, and the, these players just, they, they, they're just understanding. Obviously, Blight incredibly good in chase, but they're getting it now. Rushi getting a little bit sloppy, taking some of these swings that maybe shouldn't have been before. Not, not quite hitting, not quite tr getting the hugs that you really need to here. This has been about 20 seconds wasted on this pallet, and Rushi is still swinging at the voices in his head. And I'm going to spoil something for you. They aren't real. They don't even exist. So the hit just isn't coming through when you need it right now. And yeah, finally there. Zava's going to get the injured, but he's going to have this building to play around here. Relatively safe, see if there's a pallet over here that can be played with. And once again, Killer's gone away. Gustavo once again just being left to their own devices, while Arushi has to go pressure out these generators. But what did they put in the Survivor cereal this morning? What's happening? I don't know. There must be something in the water in the South America region, because these survivors are absolute <laughs> demons in chase right now. Gustavo wasted so much time at that unsafe pallet, and now we got Vinny here, and he gets the drop on the pallet gem onto Arushi's head. So many pallet stuns have come in this game. Sinners are on fire on survival. And Dying Light ain't gonna do a damn thing if you're not hooking the survivors. And right now, Arushi has really struggled. It's as we've said, that if you want to think about advantages and disadvantages, it seems like a perk that can really help you snowball here. But, you know, the ability to actually get those hooks in the first place is important. And right now, I wouldn't even consider this massively misplaying from Arushi. I just think that the survivors of Sinners are absolutely on point right now. So uh, definitely, definitely out for blood in this one. Vinny is eventually going to be forced corner map. Going to be doing a little bit of a tactical crouching at the end. Getting those squats in. I see you. But, yeah, and uh, I want to note that uh, Vinny at that Ormontile, playing that without a pellet, he wasted so much time there just by calling out that Urushi was going to try to hug check, and he's able to go corner, which wastes another, what, 30 seconds for the killer. So really good play there for Vinny. Yeah, so finally is going to be getting some slowdown, and I'm actually... Obviously, I might just curse this and every single generator pop, but I am surprised that only two gens have been done. Obviously, you can hear them all in the distance. That's a very quick heal onto Vinny. I believe that was botany knowledge coming out from Wee Jason to actually get that heal off in time. So, Vinny, if you wanted to get anyone out of the game, not a very viable target, but it is far too late to think about just tunneling someone out of the game right now. This is something that you want to be doing the moment the game starts, and another missed hit. Wee Jason just pre-running the tile incredibly well here, and... Yeah, using these singular rushes means that you're not really getting value out of your add-ons either. And yeah, that, that, that's another one. And it's just... It's really difficult. Arushi had, had a really rough early game, and then you can tell right now is just desperate to get something online, to get some hits, some kills. That's another dodge that's going to be coming through. And I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's all over but the crying. Game not technically lost yet here for the Night Owls, but with that generator done... <laughs> Arushi, how do you feel about hooking everyone with one generator remaining, mate? Yeah, only, I mean, the Tycon has been met for Sinners, and we, Jason, continuing to have an incredible chase here. 
just the, the amount of times that he just held W through that pallet and made the killer miss was just a little bit embarrassing. As uh, we Jason finally gonna go down, uh, he's going to get hooked, but you're, as you said, this is all but over. Sinners need to just do one more bend. Nobody's death hook. Everybody's alive. I mean, uh, are you a believer? And <laughs> we Jason had deliverance as well. This is like a this is like a never-ending story of pain right now. But he's not the killer inflicting it; it's the killer receiving it. Jesus Christ! Power roll or something like that. And yeah, doubling up on the gen right now. Vinny is going to be the one just getting hunted down here by this blight. But yeah, approaching this gen. So Vimes can't actually stick it, so a little bit of time is being bought here, and yeah, Bucky kind of stuck around to see if that GP end could get it, but yeah, all Vimes really now have to do is just kind of pogo back and forth from this generator. They didn't even have to do that. We Jason's on the other side of the map, Vinny as well, they can go work on Jen in the other corner. There's no discordance from the side of Arushi, so it's not really going to know when that happens, and yeah, you, you don't exactly have a free gen here either, so this is going from bad to worse for Arushi right now. Inja has mm -hmm. come through onto Vinny, but yeah. Sinners need to make sure that they don't screw up here. There is definitely room to mess up in a situation like this where you think you're really far ahead. Um, because remember, you got to be on that generator for five seconds to stop the regression. So they need to not give free hits here. They have given a couple of free hits in the last couple of minutes. And here's going to be another one on Bucky. There it is. Okay. Yeah, well, never, never mind the free hits. <laughs> Yep. Last yeah. gen is going to pop, and Sinners are going to take the Blight set in a absolutely dominant fashion, I might add. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous there. I mean, uh, I mean, we can kind of figure out what went wrong. It was just an incredibly rough early game, and Arushi could never really recover from that. Most of the credit, honestly, here, I will be giving to the survivors. These chases were absolutely on point. It wasn't even anything particularly special about, you know, their plan or any cheeky plays with perks or anything. They just knew how to run a blight really, really well. And it kind of worked out for them. And at the end, you could just see the desperation on Arushi trying to get these desperation hits through. Because, yeah, after such a dominant after such a dominant kill performance in the last round from... Um, such a dominant performance from Sinners on the last round, what are you going to do after that? Yeah, so again, this was Sinner's pick. So next round, we're gonna be going into the nurse set, which was Night Owl's pick. So I think we might have a story next round. We'll have to see if Night Owls is able to capitalize on the killer that they picked. But uh, for now, Sinners up 1-0, repping South America once again. Their run through the loser's bracket looks like it might continue if they're able to win this next game. So we're gonna go to a short break while we set up the nurse set. Don't go anywhere, guys. This is going to be so exciting. Just see if night, if night owls can tie this up one to one. So we'll be right back. Little fun fact that we kind of just learned about here: rats and someone else. Uh, not, not, don't remember exactly who, but rats is one of only two nurses thus far in the tournament to actually hold every single generator. We're going to be seeing whether a repeat of that is possible today. But as we know, Rats is going to be an absolute demon on this killer. And yeah, going to be blinking through, trying to get through onto Gustavo nice and early. It's actually going to be running the... It's actually going to be running the Rusty Spoon. Tell me a little more about why you might run this add-on as opposed to like the, you know, the Dark Sinsature here, uh, Pryl. Yeah, so the Rusty Spoon, what it does is it means that when you hit a survivor with a blink attack, it's going to increase the volume of their injured noises. And honestly, I mean, he's going to get that first hit onto Wee Jason. I'm not sure why you would run this add-on over other ones on Nurse. Um, but maybe Rats is just, he's just got something to show us. So I think let's let's uh, see if Rats is able to show us here. And oh. Wee Jason, nice mind game there on the Ormond tile. He's going to get the stun onto Rats. He is going to go corner after that, so generally a pretty good chase there against Nurse if you're able to get a pallet stun and then go to die in the correct place. There is a gen being doubled, and I mean, Wee Jason dies so far away from that gen that they're almost certainly going to be able to get it. Yeah, and also really far away from a hook as well. Every single second here counts against a Nurse, but I think also while we're talking about Nurse, I feel like I feel like we can talk about the kind of the narrative behind Nurse in Comp DVD. Obviously, always a strong killer, no doubt about that, but survivors have gotten so much better in the past years, and bouncing has gotten so much tighter that 
Nurse is no longer just a guaranteed 4K. It's not really just, you know, an easy day at the office for the killers here. They're really going to have to try their absolute damnedest here. But if you're rats right now, you don't have an issue with that. You're just going to be sweeting through, getting that hit through onto Sweet Child as well. And yeah, early hooks mean that you do get to just kind of, you know, tunnel someone out of the game. But, ooh, never mind. Unhook is actually going to be coming through. So, obviously, and Bucky, that's, vulnerable, that's actually... but not the target. That's actually going to be Babysitter on Bucky there, which is going to get Wee Jason so much distance over to the corner of the map. And he also has Lucky Break here, so is Rats actually going to be able to find him? He is in the Terror Radius, but um, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, so Rats is going to be able to find Wee Jason Edge Map, and another gen is going to pop at the Shack. Good gen progress so far for centers. Rats is going to get this second down onto Wee Jason, and we do see another gen being doubled in the distance. Sinners are obviously really comfortable in this inner set as Wee Jason is going to get put onto his second hook. And Rats is going to have to kick it into gear if he wants to keep the title of being the, one of the only nurses to not get out outed here. I think we talked earlier about the Rusty Spoon and how, why the hell would you run it, but maybe there's potential there. When you have a survive with Lucky Break on, who's ducking and diving in between all those walls, uh, it could be pretty useful in that very niche situation. So you know what? Rats... You found value. Good on you, bud. Like, he's going to have this pop, but actually not going to be delivering onto any generators yet because the ones that wanted to defend were gone. And right now, actually, this is a pretty good spot for... It's actually a decent spot for Slivers to be in. Overcome is actually going to allow Bucky the distance to come and get this unhook. It's going to go down for their trouble there. And we, Jason, is going to be chased all the way down. But yeah, once again, as we asserted, Guardian and Lucky Break actually going to be expiring soon. And yeah, nice dodge there. That extra haste really coming in clutch at the final hour right now. We, Jason, unfortunately, is the one with the mid kit. So not really the target that you want getting tunneled out. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers right now. Right now, we, Jason, is begging for their life. But it's not going to be worth anything. But this is going to be the fourth generator completed in... This is shocking time. Has it even been five minutes? Yeah, so, I mean, Sinner's so efficient right now. They're going to get that fourth generator done. Uh, we've got two injured survivors, Gustavo, who hasn't been touched yet. And, th I mean, it's do or die time for Rats right now. He needs to, I mean, he needs to both find injured survivors and also end chases on them instantly. He does actually have somewhat of a 3-gen here, including the main building generator, so that's going to be really important for him, but this generator does have progress. This is going to be his first actual valuable pop of the game, and Sinners right now, they need to get reset somewhere safe. If if, if Rats is able to find them healing, and he does, oh! heal comes in on a sweet child, but he's going to immediately get injured here, and if Rats can end this chase quickly, which he does, this might be oh, ticket, a ticket back into the game for him. Yeah, I mean, th th this is the issue. Obviously, you can see generators being done incredibly quickly, and you genuinely think, yeah, this is brilliant for the survivors. They're doing their job absolutely perfectly. But then all of the three gens are just, you know, within a lick of each other, and suddenly you're in a really bad spot. And as we've said, the actual closeness of the gens for it to be a three gen is very generous for a killer like Nurse, who can, you know, just get to the other side of the map in about, you know, three clicks or so. So pretty good from rats here obviously survivors not really ideal there just kind of rushing gens maybe not necessarily prioritizing where they are necessarily Gustavo does kind of is kind of l lurching on the sides here looking to actually get that save onto sweet child and yeah spies in the shadows once again proving some absolutely immense value it does seem like just a relatively consistent information perk for these um for these killers for these stronger killers coming out in lieu of some of the stronger uh, regression which wouldn't be allowed so yeah Bucky also still has this deliverance here so honestly if you're Bucky you probably don't even mind taking this chase with overcome as well you can waste a lot of time but it's just going to be dodging here and yeah that actually buys time for the reset on this tweet child Rat getting maybe 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 detracting from where the priorities really lie here yeah, Rats seems to really think that Bucky is back there, but he just didn't check the right place, but now he's actually going to see this, the progress spies from the shadows. Shaking his and fist in the sky. <laughs> he's actually going to try to fake Bucky out and go back, and he is going to find him this time. But Bucky does have a lot of distance, so Rats is just going to have to choose to go back somewhere else, because he, I think he knows that this main gen is going to be double. Well, in theory, at least, and yeah... 
Pairs are actually going to be coming through here. Life actually used very early to get the hell away. If there's a chase that happens against Gasol in the next 60 seconds, that is going to be a pretty rough time. But no, it is going to be Sweet Child instead, the one who is going to get count. And yeah, this is a spot where it doesn't seem like there are any generators. It's the corner of the map. So obviously you, you can kind of take your chase here just fine. And now you have a relatively blind shot. You're going to be able to make it. Course not. Sweet Child once again getting in those squats. It is leg day, of course, every single day. And yeah, <laughs> Sweet Child is baiting rats. Come and chase me right now. I dare you. But rats, uh, don't really have the ego for that one. Just going to accept. Yeah, I don't think I will. Yeah, and Rats is losing time here as Bucky is doing that other oh. generator. He's gonna miss another blink. The furthest generator from him is constantly being progressed. Sinners are so efficient right here. They're playing their distance so well, which is exactly what you have to do against a nurse. They're pre-running every time. They're using their exhaustion perks. And, I mean, they're just not letting Rats get anything started here after the tunnel out onto Wee Jason. Their comps have got to be super efficient right now. But Spies is actually going to rat out Bucky here on the edge map oh. wall, but Rats is going to miss the swing again. I mean, he might be able to take this chase in Shaq, but every, ta every chase he takes here is that main building generator getting done more. Yeah, and, mi and missing another hit there with both the players. <laughs> Bucky, what are you doing, bud? And yeah, that is the last gen gonna be done. These survivors enjoying life right now, having a little bit of fun. And why wouldn't you? That was an awful first position to be in. But you get all the gens done very quickly. And then they play absolutely sublime Dead by Daylight. Just running this killer in circles right now. And obviously, uh, Bucky... <laughs> you, you, you've done it now, you've gone pissed off the nurse, so Bucky isn't going to have fun for the net foreseeable future. But this buys time for the escapes to come through, so there are yeah, going to be a couple of escapes coming through. More time being bought here. And he Bucky has deliverance here, so he's completely oh. fine with being the one chased. Um, as we um, see, oh. we Jason, bli or no, oh, that, was, that was Gustavo blinding himself there in the exit gate. Yeah. Tactical and play, tactical uh, play. Is Sinus going to try to go for something here with deliverance? I'm not sure. I mean, it's worth a try. If you're if you're Bucky, you don't really lose anything by just you know popping the deliverance here and making a run for it. I suppose, but <laughs> no, this is a. Uh... I don't know what horror movie this is, but it's not one that I've seen recently. Yeah, okay, uh, just, just based on very this low play, budget, very low I budget. I don't think Bucky has any delusions of getting out the exit gate. I think he just wanted to uh, throw a pallet on Rats's head. Um, so Don't Bucky is going Don't to go all. down once again, and I think that's going to be seven stages, I think, for rats. Um, unless the spectator is glitching out again, but it is going to be a 2k regardless. Uh, really good result from Sinners. They played this so efficiently, even in that loose 3 gen, they played their distance so perfectly, they, they did not let rats get anything started on this nurse. And this is Night Owl's pick. And this is going to be a very doable win condition coming in here for whoever is playing the nurse on sinners. This is a very good opportunity for them to close this series right here. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, sinners. They are so close to finishing their revenge arc, right? They were knocked down to the loser's bracket in the first round of this tournament by the Night Owls, and they are on the precipice right now of closing this series out. So we're going to be back in just a few minutes to see whether the revenge arc is going to be complete or whether Night Owls have something very devious up their sleeve. So we'll be back very shortly. Don't go anywhere. We are back on Groaning Storehouse 2 for what could possibly be Night Owl's last set in the winter circuit here. We got Phenom on the nurse and he needs eight stages or seven with four fresh. And that would put Sinners into the next round, sending Night Owls home. So Night Owls back against the wall here. Every chase, is, every chase needs to be perfect as they do the generators and escape here. And we see Spies from the Shadows again on our nurse. He's going to find his first survivor. It's going to be Winter Edit in the corner of the map at the TL. First hit comes in, and we see a certain purple add-on here. Edgar, why don't you tell us about this one as... Oh, nice dodge. Yeah, purple add-on undetectable after a blink hit for a couple of seconds. Seems like more than 20 or so. I don't have the exact stats up, to be perfectly honest. But yeah, essentially, you get undetectable after a blink hit. I mean, is it good? 
Yes, no, maybe Palette so. Save. We'll have to Palette see. Save coming Palette in save there. does come through, though. Yes, absolutely. Well spotted there. So this is going to buy a little more time here. And Blink used very quickly here. I mean, that second one, it was almost a free hit onto Blink's Reddit, but not going to be used there. That one, a little more clear. You got clear around the rest there. But again, that's a little more time bought here. But it did bring a survivor over from doubling up on the generator. So you're going to have to see... You, you, you're going to have to kind of make a judgment call later in the match as to whether that save was worth it or not. Yeah, and the important thing here is that that pallet save allows them to get the double generator done. Even though it doesn't look like that pallet save bought Winter Reddit a lot of time, that's the only reason there are four generators now. And oh, oh this is disaster for, Re for Night Owls. The person who was going to unhook gets found near the hook, probably due to spies from the shadows. Really good call out there from Xenon. And Rats is going to take a tag here at the shack. Yeah, it, it was really important that Rats didn't get found there, and now there's going to be a chase onto him. Snowball possibly starting for Fion as Rats goes into the corner. He is going to go down. This is looking really good for Sinners. Yeah, did end up having to drag a survivor, as you say. Drag a survivor off doing the gens to actually come and get the rescue through. The amount of people working on gens at the end of the day, still one person, so kind of the same. But obviously, a little bit of time wasted there, just kind of figuring out who would be doing what. And Phenom going to be going right over to this high ground here, try and get a good vantage point of the map, see if anyone can be found out. Knows that a reset came through, maybe thinking that because of the time taken to reset, they ended up still kind of staying in that corner of the map, but... Said spies is going to be giving us more information over and looks like a little bit of a tunnel, yeah, maybe coming through. Tunnel maybe coming through onto rats right now, but actually, no, it's going to be prioritizing a Rushi instead. Firecracker is dropped, is it going to do anything? It looks very nice, but uh, no, it doesn't at the end of the day. Blinks are going to be coming through, however, and a Rushi is going to be dodged. It's going to be dodging, diving, ducking, weaving, every single thing that you can do to avoid a nurse in the meanwhile. Has deliverance here. Did actually get a save, so we are going to see some value coming out of this as well. And yeah, just going to be running kind of this corner as well. Again, more time being bought, more time for these generators to get completed here. Remember, it is going to be eight stages required here from Phenom to clutch out a win. If not, then you'll settle for seven stages with four fresh hooks. But right now, still a fair, still a fair distance from that. And yeah, instant unhook going to be coming out on a Urushi. I don't know, that, that that deliverance pull was really early, especially Very, yeah. against the nurse and on a survivor that presumably doesn't have any anti-tunnel stuff. Urushi really confident in his nurse chase here as he's just going to continue to actually just go right back into the comp corner. He's going to go down again, but it looks like another gen is going to pop for Night Owls, and they have and another, another one about to finish too. This is going to be Urushi's second hook. So maybe that's why they were playing fast there. They really wanted to keep the nurse in that corner. And now, I don't know if they get this gen before the pop goes, the weasel comes in. We see the nurse holding Blink and Rats is injured. He has to sprint burst away. And that is gonna probably be a pop onto the shack gen. That is really important timing. There. Yeah, one gen, but no two gen there, unfortunately going to be coming out here. And yeah, Phenom right now putting in a pretty, uh... Right now, Phenom is going to be putting in a pretty decent performance thus far. Rushi, again, as, as we said earlier, very interesting decision there to use the Deliverance so early and then go down for it. There was no decisive on a Rushi either. That, that would be on a different survivor instead, so nothing really come through. And spotted someone around here, uh, you know, a sneaky little weasel trying to make their way onto this side of the map. And yeah, that gen getting done in the corner, that is not what you want at all. And that was not the gen that Rats was on either. So Night Owls oh, are no. really close to finishing the fifth gen here. As, I mean, Night Owls, they have a lot of pressure here. They're playing fast. They're, they are playing fast. They're fast unhooking, getting into killer's face, and all the gens are done, Hector. Night Owls, what you doing, lads? Unbelievable. Counter rate is going to be going down here. A lot of survivors are injured. Arushi is nearby. You're going to have to really step up the pace here if you want to clutch this out. For Phenom, Arushi not really going to be hitting that one. Exit gates are already open. Wincons are sort of understood here. No one going to be leaving quite yet. Counter rate is going to be hooked up. I'm not sure whether this is counter rate. First hook, second hook, third hook, seventh hook. I don't even know right now. But yeah, he's going to be put on. We will see in just a moment. But it doesn't look like those eight sages are going to be coming out here. One, two, yeah, no, I'm not entirely sure. We are going to have to just very quickly... Yeah, so I want to update us very quickly on to whether this will be a tie or a kill we or know. what know. have you. 
Bruce Nia dying is a win. If count, we, yeah, if if if, uh, if counter raid dies, that's a win. Okay, so that's why we're gonna see the resets coming in for Night Owls here, and they are absolutely going to have to save counter raid here. This is gonna be very intense. Yeah, no, it's correctly pointed out to us by all the wonderful people working uh, working overtime backstage in the wings right now of DBD League. Obviously, yep, so the... you have to give a lot of credit to them. But this is the last fresh hook because in the last round, because in the last round there were only three fresh hooks. If this gets to seven hook stages, then the fourth fresh hook will be that tiebreaker and it will secure the win here for Phenom. So it, they need to save at the end of the day. Yeah, as the plan here for Night Owls is that Urushi has to be the one to die. That's why he's going in for the trade. He's gonna go down. He is on death hook. And I mean Life? counter raid counter raid needs to somehow survive here. There needs to be a flashlight save, a pallet save, something, a body block. And no, he's not gonna coming get blinks, through! Blink straight through rats and gets it down on the counter raid. He's gonna get the free uh. tag onto rats too. And this is gonna be so hard for Night Owls. He's gonna immediately go back up and pick counter raid. Arushi gets picked up. That means that this is going this is going to be counter raid's second hook. So if Night Owls can get this save without anybody else dying, they still have a chance. Potentially, but Arushi and Rats are injured, so they're gonna to need to reset. I mean, yeah, it's, it's actually said, Arushi is the one who needs to die, but it is really easy. The, the Exegates are not in a favorable location right now at all. You cannot just Actually, run straight to them. N nobody else can give a stage at this point because counter raid is the fourth fresh hook. Is there... Did, I, I think this is just a win here. I think that, that, that extra hook there just kind of confirms the win here for the Sinners. Yeah, they're the the next stage on the next stage on anybody is going to be the win. I'm pretty sure for sinners because it'll be so they're at six stages for fresh right now. Seven stages for fresh is the win. So Night Owls has to get this save without giving anything to Phenom. That is that's a lot to ask for. That is a lot to ask for. All right, Rushi's injured here. Cannot go down. Counter raid cannot be tunneled out of the game. But the body block gonna be coming through. This and is don't forget, bullying. The, the end game timer is going down as we speak. Counter raid now running out past the water tower, but he's injured. He has to somehow dodge this blink, and he does. He doubles yes. back. But where is he going? He's going for the hatch. Other survivors are going Wait. for the gates. Urushi is out. Counter raid making it to the shack, and he's giving. No the way. Nurse is giving up on the other survivors. Counter raid. He's trying to. He's no, trying to pull the hatch. Oh no! Oh. He's going to die. Sinners win. Photo finish. Jesus Christ. But there was a world in which... There was a world in which they didn't give anything away. There was a world in which the Night Owls tied out this series and we would have had to restart this set. Their backs were against the wall and they damn near got out of them. But at the end of the day, Sinners were just too strong, too dominant, coming down, finally exacting their revenge on the people who knocked them down to the loser's bracket in the first place. Going to be saying goodbye to Night Owls in this tournament now. And Sinners still on their lower bracket run. Their Cinderella yeah. story, so to speak. Every game we see sinners, they just get better and better. Ever since they were ever since they were sent to the losers bracket by Night Owls, they have just come back stronger every single time. They have only dropped one set since going to the losers bracket. So their run will continue into tomorrow. And I mean, I think I speak for everybody when I say that we are so excited to see if Sinners is able to continue that run. Thanks for watching everybody. We're gonna go to a break as we set up the next game. Uh, but congratulations to Sinners.